Hello! I am just about to pick some things for tonight's dinner for the video and the wind has come up. Typical. So I'm going to have to take all the sound off this and talk over the top. <laughs> but look at this. I have a massive courgette and that's what I'm going to be having for dinner. It is going to be stuffed and I'm going to pick some other things to stuff it with. Okie dokie Lily, we are going to go home and make some dims. What to do with the excess courgettes that you get at this time of year is one of life's great questions. And normally we pick them really quite small. Sometimes you let one go and they grow so quickly, it can just be a matter of days. I haven't been up to the allotment for three days. You pick them all before you left and you go back and you've got some monsters. Admittedly, this isn't as big as we've had before, but it's a really good size to be stuffed. So the recipe that I'm doing today is kind of to be taken as an example. With just a few principles, you can basically use anything you've got excess of. I've stuffed courgettes with all sorts of stuff over the years excess bolognese sauce if I've been making a lasagna and it hasn't all gone in or whatever you can do exactly the same thing generally I use rice as a base for the courgette stuffing but it could be mince it could be anything in this case this is going to be vegetarian so I'm using rice as the base for it so first thing I'm going to need to do is to make the rice so the starter is going to be rice actually the starter is not going to be rice the starter is going to be a glass of wine back in a sec Is a good start. Cheers by the way. So like I was saying courgettes can become a bit of a problem at this time of year. <laughs> Most people really only need one courgette plant to keep them going for the summer, maybe two. We never just plant one or two though do we? We end up with like six, seven different courgettes, different varieties and then you are inundated and to be honest courgette doesn't freeze well. I know some people uh, swear by it and they dice it and freeze it for use over the winter but I don't like the change in texture that happens with it so really it's just a case of eat as many of them as you can. The technique of picking them small works really well but my favourite way is definitely stuffed like it comes from stuffed marrows which is proper traditional um, and they are big beasts and obviously sometimes we do end up with marrows accidentally but this sort of size is perfect. And you can stuff them with almost anything. Like I say, I'm going to start this one with rice. I'm just going to show you one recipe that I'm going to do today, which is pretty much led by what we've got coming out of the allotment at the moment. But the options are completely endless. There's an infinite permutations of stuffing for courgettes. Honestly, there is. But this one is purely been up to the allotment. What have we got up there at the moment that needs eating, needs picking? And that's what we're stuffing it with. And it's going to be really, really delicious. First thing to do, though, that I'm going to do is get the rice on because I don't have any leftover. But this is a blinding thing to do with leftover rice because it really works best if the rice itself has gone cold. Mine's just going to be lukewarm. 
but it will do. But yeah, it needs, if you've got rice left over from another night's dinner, this is it moment to shine. going I'm going to prep the courgette so with the yellow ones in particular like this one they tend to have a lot more seed inside them than uh, the green ones so the green ones I find or some at least some varieties so the all green bush and green tiger which are my two favorite green varieties they can get really quite big maybe at this size they would have a bit in them but you know they can get to pretty big courgette size and still all be flesh inside whereas when they get really big you've got a lot of kind of the early stages of the seed but in the yellow ones I find there's a lot more seed in them than the green ones even early on even when they're really small I think there's more in them I mean some people absolutely love that the texture of that the really young seed inside I'm not that keen I tend to cut it out so I don't normally grow a lot of yellow courgettes but we normally always have one plant and uh, I'm going to take the seed out of this first the absolute best tool for doing this I find is a teaspoon Right, once the six minutes is up on the rice, turn the heat off and just leave it. Don't open the lid, leave it completely as it is for at least 10 minutes. And let's move on to the courgette. I unfortunately failed to record me cutting this courgette in half, so it's already done. But I did it along the line so that you want to make sure that you've got kind of equal amount on either side and that it's going to sit flat. So this one, you see how that sits, although it's quite a wonky courgette, um, it does sit quite flat. And do you see the seed line in there? Like that's really close to the edge where those seeds are. So take your teaspoon and it's like, you know, in the 70s when you had melon balls with everything. It's like just making melon balls, but out of the courgette middle. And it's the best way. I find if you try and use a knife or something to take out, you so often just go through the base of the courgette or, you know, and it just goes failed. You can't stuff a courgette that's got all holes in it because everything comes out. Once you've got the main body of it out, it's just a case of kind of scraping back and you want to make sure that the walls and the floor of the courgette are all kind of equal because it's going to be cooked in the oven. You want it to all bake at the same time. Mm -hmm. We now have two courgette canoes, which is excellent. Everybody needs that. So we got a while to wait for the rice to cool down uh, because that is me not having any forward planning skills whatsoever. And I spent the whole day at the allotment when I should have been really setting some rice off 
about lunchtime for it to be cold, but never mind. So the things that we picked up from the allotment on our way out today were a couple of big fat chard leaves, a few scanty uh, French beans. So we've got three different varieties here. The chard is just basic Frankie's Bietta. And the three beans we've got are New Decker, which is supposed to be a yellow bean. You can see it's a little bit yellow, but um, we haven't had enough sunshine really to make them proper yellow, so it's a little bit greeny. But in comparison to say the Cobra, which is proper green, you can see there is a color difference. So we've got New Decker, Cobra, and Violetta, which is a purple one. So, I mean, this is not an enormous bundle of beans, but it's just at the moment, they're just getting started. So we're just picking the first lots and it tends to be, you know, bits and pieces at the beginning before they really get going. So I've got those, I've got the chard. I've also got some tail ends of some spring onions that I picked and we had for lunch yesterday up at the allotment, but I only used the bulb end. So I've got the, you know, the straggly green ends bit. So this is gonna go into the topping. And then I've got that banana pepper that I picked in the greenhouse just before we left. Feeling behind me, feeling behind me. There it is. This one. So we are looking at chard, beans, spring onions, a banana pepper. And the other thing I'm gonna put in there is some chopped cherry tomatoes, which we picked from the polytunnel day before yesterday. So we've got these chaps. Got right mix in here. We've got, we've got a Brad's Atomic grape and a shimmer, which actually in terms of shape, they look pretty similar. The shimmer is just red and green rather than all of the colors that you get in the Brad's Atomic grape. And I've got a lot of sun gold. And I've also got some little garnet. Now of the cherry tomatoes, sun gold and the garnet are the two like, strongest tasting. So I'm gonna be using a mixture of those two. I'm not gonna use large tomatoes for this. Not that I have any large tomatoes, to be honest. It is the beginning of August and we still haven't had a ripe big tomato, which is nuts. But I wouldn't be using one of them anyway because, because I want the tomatoes to stay quite like separate of themselves. So I'm gonna quarter them, but quartering the cherry tomatoes, they don't just turn into a big splurge. They are all kind of, they stay themselves is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna use a mixture of those two tomatoes in there as well. And then it is the basil and the oregano that we also picked. So that's gonna be pretty delicious, I think. The binding piece that's gonna hold the whole lot together is going to be some mozzarella cheese. And then I'm going to put a topping on of a little bit of cream cheese. I've also got a little bit of garlic um, I'm using up the sadder looking of the garlic at first because the bigger ones, the bigger sort of fatter ones that weren't affected by any white rot or leaf mine or anything like that are the ones that are gonna last longer. So I'm using up the sort of sad, misshapen, misformed ones at the moment. So we're gonna have a bit of garlic in there. And really the thing is, is that from this point, like once you've got a bit of rice and you've got your big courgette that's gonna be stuffed, it's whatever you've got going really like i said i'll put a load of different options at the end of this video but really like options are endless i've got i've got uh, genovese basil here but i do have a load of thai basil growing up the allotment and previously i've stuffed the courgettes with kind of a special fried rice type thing with a load of thai basil in it that's amazing so like ginger and chopped fried carrot and shrimp and Thai basil and spring onions and all of that into the top of a courgette. Absolutely amazing. It's such a versatile thing to do because the flavour comp, because courgette itself, particularly when they get to that size, it doesn't have a really domineering flavour. So whatever you're putting in it kind of controls the flavour of the dish. So just having one technique, like one way of cooking things, a stuffed courgette, it can be so many different things. That's what's so nice about it. But anyway, I'm gonna get on with this version because, because mom is waiting for her dinner and uh, I don't wanna keep her waiting. Right, let me start chopping some stuff up. So the rice is already cooked, as you know, that's why it's on the stove. But the reason it's already cooked when we stuff the courgettes is that the courgettes themselves don't take that long to cook. They will just become mush. If you were gonna stuff it with raw rice, like you would say if you were stuffing vine leaves or something when you cook them down for a really long time. If you stuffed it with raw rice, the courgette will have just completely disintegrated by the time the rice is actually ready to cook. So, which also means that the stuff that we put in the rice has to be quite small, that it's gonna cook in about 20 minutes in the oven so that you're preserving the shape of the courgette, but also everything else inside is cooked. So the things that I'm gonna put in there, I'm gonna chop up really quite tiny. 
I'm also going to partially cook the chard before I mix it in. Not because I don't think it would cook in the 20 minutes, but the size reduction that chard goes through when you initially cook it, that's what I want. Just because otherwise, if I try and stuff it into the courgettes while it's raw, it'll all be pinging out all over the place and being a right pain. is salt in the rice there's not very much and you've got to salt the filling enough that it's going to also be enough salt to carry the courgette so you want the inside to be ever so slightly saltier to carry the fact that the courgette's got no seasoning whatsoever so throw in a bit of salt and give it a good old mix round i'm going to use a little bit of cream cheese in this mix itself just because it needs something to really stick it together because this is quite a dry mix it needs a bit of help so i've put in about a tablespoon of cream cheese into this as well and just giving it a really good stir then it's time to stuff the courgettes so it's going to be foil in the bottom of a baking dish i put foil in because as it's baking down the juices run out sometimes the base of the courgette can kind of weld itself to the bottom of the pan in which case when you try and get it out it's no longer stuffed courgette it's just mush so you do need a bit of foil on the bottom these this is a new box of foil and these little tassels just never come off oh there we go right so courgettes into the baking tray oh wait maybe this is going to be too small yeah okay bad choice i'll find a different tray <laughs> Okay, let's stuff them. I do a small layer in both first, just because it's happened to me so many times that I've piled one up and then when I get to the second half or however many you're doing, you don't have enough to fill the last one. So I do base layer in both and then share out what's left. Pile it up nice and high. Right, they are going straight into the oven. No need to cover them with foil or anything. It's just for the bottom. And the oven is going to be at about gas mark six, which works out at about 200, I think, electric. And they'll be in there for about 20 minutes. Cooking time depends so much on either the size of the courgette you're using or the kind of filling that you've put in it. So if it's something that's entirely pre-cooked, say you've got leftover bolognese sauce or 
chili con carne, something like that, you can just stuff that in, in which case you are just waiting for the courgette to be soft enough to eat because everything else is cooked. If you're putting something in there that needs a bit of time, of all of those things that we put in, the only thing that really needs any sort of time to it is the raw green beans. It's gonna need at least 20 minutes, but the way to check is just take a skewer or a fork or a knife or something and just check the side of the courgette and check that it's soft. And if it's soft, it's ready to go. Not too soft, mind, because otherwise the whole thing just collapses. But if, you know, you can get your knife through it, then it's ready. So I was talking about all the different kind of varieties of stuff that you could put in there. And basically, like I was saying, the options are endless. The only thing that's sort of unifying about it is that it has to have something to hold it together. Because you're carving out the courgette and it's quite shallow, you want your filling to mound up slightly on top of it because otherwise you've got very little filling for the amount of courgette that you've got, if you see what I mean. So you need something that's gonna bind it, which is why we've got the bit of mozzarella in there and the tiny bit of cream cheese to kind of like hold the whole thing together so that you can pile it up and it needs to kind of be mounded a bit. Otherwise you've just got like a cooked courgette with a little bit of something else on the side. Cheese is the easiest way to bind anything together because if you can just pack it on, then as soon as it goes in the oven, it melts, then it holds the whole lot together. So it could be Parmesan or Gruyere or anything like that would hold it together perfectly well. This is quite a, I suppose you'd say, sort of an Italian to European type flavour set because it's got the tomatoes and the mozzarella and all that sort of stuff in there. You can have it in a more oriental style like I was talking about with the uh, Thai basil, that's really nice. You can stuff it with kind of a more paella type thing, paella, you know, with um, seafood and saffron rice, that's pretty good. That's really delicious. Risotto works really well. If you've got leftover risotto, that's a good way of using it up. Right, if you don't fancy making arancini, you can um, stuff it into a courgette. Mm -mm -mm. The only thing about that that I would say is that if you're doing that, um, if you're making the risotto specifically to go into the courgette, I would make it and let it go completely and utterly cold because if you try and put hot risotto into a courgette, it's not gonna mound up and it's just gonna be like a puddle. I've stuffed them before with beans. You know, I absolutely love the bolotti beans. And this year, I've got to say, the bolotti beans are looking amazing. So fingers crossed I'll be doing that soon enough. But yeah, so any sort of beans, pulses, doesn't have to be rice. If you're a vegan, obviously, I've never actually used vegan cheese, but I'm assuming it does the same, like, melting capacity as normal cheese. So anything you've put in with that's perfect. One of my favourite ways, which is really simple and really not a slimming number, is just rice, bacon, black pepper, loads of Parmesan cheese and cream stirred into it. <laughs> uh, and then that stuffed in there because that is really, really good. Really good. And it makes it seem less bad because it's in a courgette. Anyway, I'm just going to check and see if they are soft yet because they've been in there for about 20 minutes, I'd say. Let's have a look. Not yet. <laughs> But what I am going to do is, um, I don't know if you noticed, but I never actually put the spring onion tops that I had into the mix to go in there. So I'm going to just use that very last bit of cream cheese that was in that pot, mix it up with the spring onions and stick that on the top at the end, because I think that will be...
I gotta say that was really, really tasty. So that's one thing to do with courgettes. I mean, there's a lot of different ways of doing that, like I said, with um, all the different kind of permutations that you could stuff it with. So a question for you, because I've got so many different things to stuff a courgette with, would you be interested in a follow-up video to this, which would be kind of just rather than all the background and the carving of the courgette and all that kind of nonsense, actually just looking at like say five different things to stuff a courgette with? Would you be interested in that? Let me know underneath. Because I'm saying, oh, you could stuff it with anything. But I do understand that a lot of the time, particularly when you're faced with 40 courgettes, like inspiration can be quite hard to come by. So if you do think it would be useful to just have like a video of five different things that you could stuff a courgette with that would make it a completely different meal, let me know if you're interested in that. And other than that, chaps, that's about it for this week. I hope that's something that might help with the courgette glut. Because any kind of help with the whole, with the whole, because any kind of help with the whole, whole cut, cut. Why can't I say it? Because any kind of help with the courgette glut uh, is welcome. I remember the first year that we had like on mass courgettes, and um, it was a struggle. Actually, we ended up for years not growing courgettes because we had completely overdone it with them, and had courgette cake and courgette muffins and courgette this and courgette that. The problem is that a lot of the ways you have courgettes, they do still taste like courgettes. And if, which I love, I do love a courgette, but if you're having that with every single meal, it can really wear you out on the courgette front. So um, anyway, I'm rambling. I will see you on Tuesday for another vlog. We've been going great guns with the chicken house. So that's all going to be on next week's vlog. Yeah, I will see you on Tuesday, chaps. See you later. Cheers, I've finished my glass of wine which is a bit of a pants, but um, cheers. I hope you haven't finished your glass. <laughs> See you later. Now we've got two cork, 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 c